Amen. Amen. God bless the women. Tell me what you have. I have joy. Joy, joy in Jesus. More than God forever. Amen. Amen. I'm Ophelia to a lawyer very quickly. <laughs> and I don't know why she did that. What is it? Amen. Amen. Should I continue from the teaching side? No problem. You can. Are you sure? Yeah. Can you handle that? Yeah. It's permanent. It's permanent. Okay. Class. Uh, I prefer teaching so that you can write some notes down. But when we preach, you go so fast, you can't say anything, you can't ask any question if you don't understand it, right? When he's teaching, I cool down and you flow with me. You want to make it interactive. We interact with each other. Amen. Amen. Today is Pemem. Who knows the full meaning of Pemem? Mm -hmm. Raise my hands. I want a man. Thank you. I want a man to, a man to say Pemem means? Isaac. Samuel. Yes, Samuel. And you are? James. Davis. I know Jeff, I know Nana, okay. I know Echo, uh, I know Bra James, I know um, Eric, I know Jürgen. Jürgen, please, what is Pemem? <laughs> That's why you have to come to church early. You missed a great deal this morning because you were late. Uh -huh. Hold on. Pentecost, men, fellowship. There's no F there, so. Pentecost, men, ministry. As long as you are a man in this church, you are part of the ministry. Amen. And every ministry or everything has a goal and a vision. So listen carefully. The vision of the permanent is to come, is to become an effective and significant ministry to passionately reach men for Christ in partnership with the church. We reach out for men in partnership with the church. So as you go to your daily works and school, remember you are part of a ministry. So the idea is to get somebody to come and be part of the ministry, ministry that you are part of. The mission is this, a total Christian man who is committed, spirit-filled, and strong in character, or strong in Christ's character, to positively impact the family, the church, and the community. That's our mission, is to be a Christian who is committed and spirit Filled and strong in Christ's character. You have your own character. Two weeks ago, uh, beside Elder uh, Protest about character, but this one I'm talking about Christ's character, which will help you to positively impact your own families and this church and the entire community. So that when somebody sees you, you say that, ah, this guy is very exceptional with the way he dresses. The way he tackles his shirt, he doesn't pull his trousers here, mm -hmm. showing half of his bum bum, and then showing like that. No, this guy is very decent. You don't need to tell somebody who you are. You can even see the way you dress. Or oh, I always say that you will be addressed by the way you dress. Most of the time, people call me pastor. Say, "Oh, thank you for the honor, but I'm not yet a pastor." Why? The way I dress. Somebody will say, "Ah, leave that poor man. Look at the way he dress." Even the way you dress will tell people how to be addressing. So take it today, lesson number one. You'll be addressed by the way you dress. Amen. We continue. Permem has been in this church for ages since Pentecost started. Today we are celebrating this week, and every man is part and parcel of it. But the theme that has been given to us this week is man. Let your lifestyle be an example of Christ in your generation. Man, let your lifestyle be an example of Christ in your generation. Very nice one, eh? Yeah. Good. Who can explain this to me? Yeah. 
I'm teaching. I'm not going to preach. So you're going to talk to one one, right? That's what you say you want him. Okay. I'm going to England, England now. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. What is a lifestyle? Uh, someone want to say something. Uh -huh. Lifestyle. What is a lifestyle? Humble life. Okay, humble life. Yes. We are safe. Uh -huh. Help. Okay. What's the lifestyle? Yeah. How we live. Somebody cannot sit a day without gossiping. That is a lifestyle. <laughs> Somebody cannot sit a day without watching TV for two hours. That is a lifestyle. Somebody cannot sit down a week without going to the shops to buy something. That's a lifestyle. Somebody can't put 500 down in the pocket without spending 100 euros out of it. That's a lifestyle. Your attitude becomes your lifestyle. <laughs> When Ella was teaching the character the other day, he mentioned so many things, but that's what I want to add to it. Your manners, your manners. See, this guy, yeah, for manners, look at how he is. As if the mother didn't train well, well. That's your manners. If you don't work on your manners, they will grow to become your character. And if you don't work on it, everybody says, ah, that's how I am, leave me alone. I, everybody, even my grandmother was like that. Even my mother was like that. Okay. It become an attitude. And when attitude develops into years, people will advise you, they will admonish you. You don't take a good look at it and address yourself, repent from it, it becomes your lifestyle. That one, unchangeable. You see how it goes? It begins from manners. When you sit down at a table at home to eat, you call it table manners. You draw your food towards you with your fork and knife, you eat politely. If you want to get out of the table, what do you say? Mom, Dad, please excuse me. That's what we say, right? Those are table manners, right? When you sit at home to watch TV with your mom and dad, hey, I know this guy, I know him, hey! We do, 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 do those things at home? They are manners. You see that? We change those things from home. And when your whole papa sees that it's going on wrong, he corrects you. That, that manners will grow to become your character. And when the character is very good, people like it, you develop it. But those ones that are not good, you listen to teachings and advice and then you refrain from them. Otherwise, it will grow to become your attitude. And attitude is very, very bad. Oh, you know the guy we call Nana? Oh, that guy has a bad attitude. Oh! Even in the past, you couldn't even stand up for that old woman to sit down. Hey. I'm just joking. <laughs> That's not how he is. Eh? Why did he get that attitude from? It was his character because he always wants to be that. But when, if you trace down his manners, when the father is coming home from work, and I would never rush down to get her best bag, and I'm using as an example. Eh? That's not how he is. Eh? But if he has the manner of always receiving the papa's bag when he gets from the car, that can I get you some water? That please can I untie your shoelaces for you? He get the manners from home. So when Nana meets an old person in a trap, oh please, mama, please have a seat. Where did he get it from? From the home. The manners. So manners grow to be a character. Character grows to be attitude. Attitude grows to be a lifestyle. So our theme said, let your lifestyle, I didn't say your attitude or your character, but or your manners, but your lifestyle, the top one, be that one of Christ. But the question is, how? How do I do this? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm listening to yours. What did you want to say? Ask me, I'm here. I'm teaching you, so feel free. Eh? If you have a question, raise your hand and ask me. We are learning today. Uh -huh. Character, and character to attitude, attitude then to lifestyle. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. you're welcome. If you don't ask anything, you just ask me. Okay. We learned earlier this morning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. The Bible said, And God said, Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Alright? So that if God has made me in his image and likeness, why should I have to let my life be like Christ? Because I'm already like God. Yeah, at all? That's what you just read. Or oh, I'm mistaken. 
the open your Bible then. If I'm mistaken, then we read it together. That's how it is. Good. Then the question is, why should I have to let my life be like Christ? Already, Genesis said, I was made in God's image. Is that something wrong with the scripture? Nothing wrong. Then why should I have to let my life be like Christ? Uh -huh. It was, um, uh, you once said something that uh, in Genesis, uh, from Exodus, uh, that uh, God encounter with God, but Genesis, it says something about some, something like that. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, we encountering with Jesus, you know, that was in the New Testament. It was the Old Testament was about the Israelites. Uh, now we are in the new creation. We are in the new blood. We are from Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's clap for him. <laughs> when you read the Bible and you depend on only one thing, you always make a mistake. You have to read more. Indeed, God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. He said that. But are we really in God's likeness and his image? Mm -hmm. Something went wrong. After God brought Eve into the scene, Satan came in and then he tricked Eve to eat the, for the forbidden fruit. Right? So the Bible says they sinned and God expelled them from the Garden of Eden. So that God's nature that Adam received, he lost it. He lost it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5. Let's start from there. Then you know why you should let your lifestyle be like Christ. Genesis chapter 5, verses 3. Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. Because, okay, continue. Uh, start from Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. I'm reading from the NIV. Uh -huh. Adam, Are you following her? Please come. Adam what is, please, what, one second, please. What's your name? And you have an inter... Come on, he made a call. Come, off stop. That's it. In the classmates of cards, you can ask me. And good last one. Good. Better can ask me. Oh, Genesis chapter 5, verse 3. I'm reading from the NIV. Uh -huh. When Adam had lived 130 years, mm -hmm. he had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named himself. Amen. It's okay. Yes. After they have eaten the forbidden fruit, they were disobedient to God. God sat them out of the garden. Genesis chapter 5 verse 3 said, And Adam lived 130 years. And then he gave birth to a son. He didn't put a full stop there. He continued the sentence by saying, After his own... After his own... And... Are we in God's image? No. 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 So you see where he came from? Genesis. Oh, let me bring this quotation in. Proverbs 19, 21 says, Many are their plans in a man's heart, but only God's purpose will stand. You have so many plans for yourself, but what God has said will stand. Now, God said, let, it, let me make man in my image. He did it. But the image went wrong. He disobeyed God who made him. And then, he disobeyed God. He didn't even believe in God. So then, God said, bye bye. The day you eat this one, you die. So Adam died the day he ate the fruit. But Genesis chapter 5 said, He gave birth to a son in his own image and his own likeness. So the name of the son was called Seth. So was Seth in God's image? No. No. So Seth also lived. He had children. He had children at his own likeness. The son too had children, his own likeness, and then his own likeness, own likeness, then we are here. We are here. <laughs> so, can you conclude that we are truly in God's image? No. no. Oh. See that? Uh -huh. yeah. So if you don't get the background of your story, you can't know where you are going. So then, that's why the Bible says we need to be born again. The Bible says, you who were once dead in your trespasses, once we were dead, why were we dead? Because our grandfather Adam was dead. Alright? You agree with me? God said, the day you eat this fruit, you will surely die. When Adam ate the fruit, did he die? 
Amen. Did he die? Yes. Talk to me. I'm here. Did he die? Yes. He died spiritually. Amen. There are three ways of death. When the Spirit of God leaves you, you are dead. So somebody can dress up, you know, this musician, they dress up, pimp up with gold here and gold stuff. They don't have God's spirit in them. They are walking dead pimp suit. <laughs> Two, when you get away from God's presence, you are dead for the second time. After they disobey God, did God allow them to live in the garden? Mm -hmm. What did he do? <laughs> so they were out of God's presence. And the last thing of death is when this body then you are dead for the last time. So Adam lived 130 years, but he was still dead to God. And that state, he gave birth to a son in his own likeness and his own image. So was Seth dead? Yes. Yes. So after then, all those that came after them were all dead. Good. So when Christ came, he brought us what? Life. Something that is dead needs to be revived. So Christ has to come. So we have our Christ. That's why the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he... he is so that whoever... Is shall not perish, but... Have life. If we are alive, do we need life again? But because we were dead, that's why we need to get a new life, life of God. God loves you. You see where, where our background is, eh? Alright, I'll continue the story, yeah? So, then, since Christ has come to die, that you might live, he paid a price. By the way, question number two. Who created death? God. 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 Amen. Is that true? <laughs> but God is loving. God is there. Did he create dead? You think so? Jeff, can you help him? He said he thinks so. Did God really create dead? Yes. You also think so. You are not sure. <clears throat> Somebody is speaking here. Adam, the day you eat of the fruit, you will surely die. Who is speaking? God. Who pronounced the word dead? God. Who created dead? God. So it's God who created dead. But when he created dead, dead was not functioning. Dead was created dead. It was not functioning. It's like a bottle. A child can play with a bottle. It will never cut him. When would the bottle cut the child? When it's paya. Somebody say paya. When it breaks, it can cut. That was how death was. Death was idle, doing nothing. He was waiting for Adam to break it. So the day Adam ate the fruit, fell, then he had killed. <laughs> so that time, death came in. So the Bible said, death reigned from Adam until Moses. They were all dead. But thanks be to Jesus, who saw and said, mm, I cannot let Adam continue producing dead babies and dead babies and dead babies. Let me come in once and for all. Death, kill me instead. So death had to kill Jesus. He said, hey, my friend, I'm the one who created you. I rise up again. Now the death is supposed to kill the members of Tena Pierre de Brissy. I've taken it for myself. So you should be grateful for Jesus' death upon the cross. Amen. Amen. So when he died and resurrected, you and I were given a new life. That's why the theme said, we should let this lifestyle that we have received from Jesus be like him in our generation. Generation means in about some years to come, this nana, small boy you see in our heavy stakings, you're going to be a man. Mrs. Nana will come. Mm. Mrs. Nana will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nana has produced a child after his likeness. So whatever Nana is learning today is going to pass over to his children. That's the generation we are talking about. So this message is actually not for you. But for who? For who? It's for your children and your children's children. And whatever you get today is not yours, eh? Uh, you are keeping it. So that when the child comes, 
Hmm. Once upon a time, I heard one of my elders saying this, and I want you to learn is that I help you so much, you are impacting what you have heard onto your child. Amen. Amen. I pause here for question. Does anybody have a question to ask me concerning this? Feel free, eh? in every language you like, you can ask. We are learning. I'm not preaching, I'm just we are just teaching. You need to know why certain things happen. May I have a frag? So everything is clear. Alright. My question is so if when God came to die for us, did we come back in his image because we were we were out and we were dead? So did we come back in it? Good one, good one. Good question. I'll come to that. Yeah, you, you raise your hands? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Jesus came to die for us. Mm -hmm. Before Jesus came to die for us, the people who were born before he came, the first people were born. Yeah. Thank you. I'll answer you. Third question. I'm doing it because of time, then I'm running out. Uh -huh. Third question. Okay. Your question was Did God come to die for us? Did God come to die for us? Did God come to die for us? If Jesus has come to die, and we believe in him, then that means we have a new image like God, right? Good one. The Bible says he has come to reconcile us unto God. Now, Nana, take my hand like this. Me and God is like this. The moment Adam, me, I ate the forbidden fruit and I disobey God's command, I died. That is the separation. That has come between me and God. When Jesus came, what was the shape of his cross? Like that, right? He put it between me and Nana. So now I'm linking back to God, taking God's original image again. You got a picture now? That's why the Bible says, whoever believes in him, not perish. After you are dead, you still perish, eh? but you have life. Where is the life coming from? It's coming from the original source. I'm tapping the strong truth. We have found Amen. Amen. Does that answer your question? Yes. Amen. You also asked those who died before Christ came, where would they be? Now, because of sin, heaven was shut down. Nobody entered heaven. But those who lived righteous life and believed God, when they died, they went to paradise. So the Bible says when Christ died, he went down there to hell, that, that place. And those who have been bought in captive, he set them free. Amen. And the day of his ascension, he rose with them. Even Abraham, David, all those things, they were down there, mm. locked. That's why the Bible says he took captivity captives mm. and set men in his train and gave gifts to men. So those who they were dead all right, but heaven was shut until... The blood of Christ was able to make things over the new again. Amen. 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 Another question, then I continue. Okay, I'll continue. Very soon we close. So now that we have a new life, what are you living with your life? How are you living it? Anyhow, let me make this illustration. A man has two sons, Akwesi and Kweku. Kweku is very stubborn. Papa will never send him anywhere he will go. He will even insult the parents. Koku is now on a sick bed dying. One of the kidneys is more functional. And nobody's kidney fits his than the one of Akosi, who is very obedient, very serviceable child to the parents, very boy. The daughter said, Akosi's kidney will have to support the one of Koku. Mamiesi is the son and the mother of these two boys. Is Mamiesi here? <laughs> oh, that is too funny. What can they do? Men bring that. Oh, my father, I'm going to operation. Hey, operation! Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to answer the man 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 they are all my sons. No matter what it is, one must survive. It doesn't matter if Kweku is stubborn. Akwesi, help Kweku. 
Kabasi is now in tears. If you were the mama, what would you do? <laughs> Tough, right? He has two. The chance of losing a voice is very big. Kwaku is stubborn. When he revived, not as stubborn again. And Kwasi, who is very good, child, the chance, cystic 50% that he will die. What will you do? Uh -huh. You will say no. Kwaku should go. Stop on. Okay, Mama Doris, what will you have done? If you were Mami Esi, the mother of the kid, what will you have done? It's difficult, but I think I will help, I will help the, the one who is Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Only one. But God didn't see that you are so righteous, so perfect, so good. And let Jesus come to that. Whilst you are yet still a sinner. And the word he used there in the Bible is ungodly. Ungodly, when you translate it to our modern English, is a criminal who we don't, we don't even have to judge you. We have to even kill you straight away. That was our state before God. Very terrible. But God didn't look at that. Let Jesus come to that. <coughs> So if you have mama, what would you have done? But like uh, mm -hmm. according to Nakumaswa. Ah, the Nakumaswa, you save him. <laughs> <laughs> so you are also on God's heart. That was why he let Jesus come to die. So after his death, we have got now a new life. That's why the theme is let this new lifestyle be like Christ. I have only seven points I want to give it to you. So say the men, write something down. So that this message is not for you, for your children, 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 children. Amen. Amen. Point number one. The way to be like Christ is to live in righteousness and in holiness. John 15, 10. Point number one. Write it down. In righteousness and in holiness. John 15, 10 to 14. I read. The Bible says... When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandment and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandments. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. So the first one is in righteousness and in holiness. Love your brother. Love your sister. There's no greater love than when somebody put his life down for you. Number two. Are you following me? Yeah. Okay. You can also add 1 Peter 1, 14 to 8 to the first point. When you go home, I want you to do Bible study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 114. Good. Ready? Okay. The point number two is this. We want our lifestyle to be like Christ. Finish writing? Mm -hmm. Write something down, eh? When you go home, then you learn. You read the word by yourself. Don't only really depend on what the preacher man preaches. Okay. Right. The second one is freedom from this world. You might be free from this world. The Bible says in Romans 12, verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Romans chapter 12, verses 1. 
live free from this world. Don't do the things that worldly people are doing. Their lifestyle and your lifestyle must be different. You can add this quotation also to the second point, James 4.4. 4. Not brother James, mm -hmm. but James in the Bible who wrote the book of James. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you enemy with God? I say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself enemy of God. What I'm trying to say is that the fashion that the world people are living in, don't be that. So people are fair colored, like uh, the air hostess. They say, ah, if I put tattoo here, it will brighten up. Because my class will have tattoo, and it will tattoo my body. They go there, they put this piercing thing, and then the air hostess will be doing this, and I have tattoo, tattoo. You and the world, we don't know the difference. I saw this um, uh, sunrise of TV. How am I speaking the last? I saw this actress on TV. Her skirt was up to here, and she was doing like this. So you go to Zara, you bought exactly the same thing. You walking like that. You and her. What's the difference? So the Bible says, if you love the world, you become an enemy to God. Who wants to be God's enemy here? And not not me. Uh -huh. So if you want your life to reflect of Christ. Live apart from the world. The way you dress, the way you speak. Point number three. Self-crucifixion. Oh, what's in you? Fair, uh, the self-crucifixion. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. 27. Luke 9, 23. Please, teaching. that's why I'm loading you up with quotations. Uh -huh. Self crucifixion, you must yourself, you are yourself of the cross, the now go sign. Up offer, you said up offer. Yeah, so I use it to done. Okay. Luke 9 23 27 says, Jesus said, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his daily cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life will make uh, for my sake will save it. Nowadays it's very tough to come to evening service. When you come to Friday service, in fact, you 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 weep. Only two, three. Last Friday, Jeffrey was here. Eric was here. Uh, about four people. Who else? Uh, Christian, the sister, and the brother. Because your papa was going to preach. That's why you came. I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We, we can't sacrifice something for Christ. But look at what he did. He died for you. Doing something for him, eh, I won't do it. If you want your life style to reflect out of Christ, learn how to move out of your comfort zone and do something extraordinary. Amen. Amen. Point number four, we're about to close. Walking in newness of life. Walking in newness of life. We established very well ago that we were dead like Adam. Christ gave us his life, so we are now living. So if we see we are born again, we are having a new life, then our life must be new. The things we used to do, should we keep on doing them? The concern we used to jump, should we still keep on concern? No. Things must change. Amen. Write this quotation that when you go home, read on it. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 28. Galatians 5, 15. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. These are the things he's mentioning about. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry. Let me pause the idolatry. Nowadays, we are very wise. Nobody will go and chop tree and come and worship the tree in the house. Nobody will do that. But the things we have, we cherish it more than God himself. Who can give me an example? Of the thing you love so much that you can't put it down to pray even for a minute. Did you say phone? What is phone? Phone. 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 properly. Mobile phone. Mobile phone. What not me? Tablets. What not me? 
Social media, what not me? Facebook. Facebook, Facebook. what not me? Okay, let me know because somebody don't know what social media is. So Facebook, uh -huh. WhatsApp, Snapchat, Snapchat. Snapchat. Instagram, Twitter, Take it down, let's start, Ilmo, I go, Tango, Kingo. You see? First time. Thank you, first time. All those have become idols. Our phones are with us 24-7. Are you close the Bible like this? I'm here. Hello. Hi. Are we close the Bible like we are close with our phones? Be honest. Later. If anything that you replace God is they become an idol. Somebody is sitting there watching TV. If the program has not ended, you never even stand up to go to the way and come back. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's even what you miss a thing. But put preaching on the TV. <laughs> I'm going to sleep, oh. <laughs> so, you see, you see, the idol worshiping has transformed from our old Mother's Day when they were worshiping stones. Now, we have it here. <laughs> I'm not saying throw your phones away. I didn't say that, eh? But don't let them take your precious time. Hmm? Uh -huh. Good. I won't go further. So when you go home, read Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 16 downwards. All those things, we must quit them. Yes? Division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other things like this. Let me tell you again, as I have done it before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit God's kingdom. Is the Bible saying it? Mm -hmm. Some people, they can envy you so much, they will, they will come concern you, the things you have not done. Ah, you know no, no. You know no, no. That guy. Ha. If you say, don't greet him. That nana, that boy. You know what I just ha. And you say, <coughs> what has he done? He can never find one thing to tell you. <laughs> Last time I went to the shop with Nana, he bought one shoe and said, Nana, this shoe will fit you. Nana, he insulted me, Nana, that boy, hey, Nana. <laughs> he would despise Nana, pass out. Well, Nana has done nothing. And he bring a division between you. It's very bad. Drunkenness. God said, have dominion. Now, drink is having dominion over you. When you pack. Uh -huh. I won't go further. When you go home, we. Next time I stand, I'll ask you these questions, eh? Mm -hmm. I see uh, Amma looking at me. <laughs> Amma, have I said anything wrong? No. Okay. Number five. Be in the fruit of the Spirit. The same Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Number five. Live in the fruit of the Spirit. Who can give me uh, an example of a fruit of the Spirit? Yeah. Uh -huh. Joy. Joy. Love. Uh -huh. Love, uh huh. Patience, uh huh. Peace. Charity, uh huh. Faith, peace. Peace, uh huh. Kindness, Kindness uh huh. Freedom, freedom. Yeah. Hey. freedom is part of it. Long suffering, uh huh. Faithfulness, uh huh. Hey, this guy, you chop that thing in your head. I like that, uh huh. You are giving me four, strong four, uh huh. Endurance, uh -huh. one more, one more. I want, I want everybody to, somebody to mention that one. I like that one. Self control. We can't control ourselves. These days. We can't control ourselves. You see the suit in the shop. You like it, but picture myself in that suit standing here with the chest out. Check the money. Tight suit. Tight. Seems tight, and the time I'm going closer to the sea because I can't control it. Oh. Uh, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Uh, let me buy it like that. <laughs> no, it's not every time that the spirit is willing, you have to control yourself. Somebody called, talking, talking about sister. Somebody, sister, for example, control your mouth, even though you know that sister is talking, it's true. That Amma, that's how they didn't come to church. You know where she was? I even saw her at the stop. I'm like, hey, keep your, control your mouth. Hey. Tell your sister, control your mouth. Control your mouth. 
of self-control. Amen. You like it? It's going on? Okay. Be in this, the Bible says, there is no law against these things. No law says, why are you having self-control? Go to prison. Uh -huh. Gentleness. Be gentle. Uh, what I like about Jeff is, when it's raining, you just walk gently to the church. Even though he's so... Last time, he did it. I said, Jeff, I go, no, I'm going to check your car. If your car is... I said, wow. Gentle, he come in. If you even slap Jeff, Jeff say, I forgive you. You know, I like the Jeff. Let's go for Jeff. <laughs> Point number six. In total setting apart for God's work. Total setting apart for God's work. When we are looking for somebody to be a deacon in the church, can we choose you? Can you say, despite all the busy shadows I have, I want to set myself apart for God's work? Jesus did it. He left every stone and came. You can find this one in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. I read a bit of it. He says, Therefore, come out from them. Somebody say, come out. Come out. Come out. And separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things. And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. <coughs> See, come out. <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. Who is holy here? I'm not gonna be in trouble today. If you are holy, stand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are you standing up already? Ten. Okay. Sit down. One thing that the church is suffering from is what I'm going to tell you. If the interpretation of the scripture is wrong, your life will be wrong. A word like righteous or righteousness, a word like holiness or perfect, if you don't understand those things, you categorize yourself differently and you give yourself a tag. David said, the Lord, yes, is attentive to the cry of his holy children. And you say you are not holy. Will God hear you? No. Holiness is not sinlessness. Eh? When I realized, I learned this one, I was surprised. No nation sin like the one of Israel people. They sin. Discrimination. But God called them, you are a holy nation. A peculiar people. You see this song. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. But when I say who is holy, nobody says he is. The moment you set yourself apart, you separate yourself from the whole mass, you become holy. Maybe you were in a group of concert group or a kind of lifestyle group. I used to be a disco goer. Me. Hey, Thursday I'm there. Friday, uh, uh, students' evening. Saturday, RB. Sunday, African night. I am there all the time. And when I step on the dancing floor, hey, hey come and see. You can picture me there, you know. I will not buy water. I will not buy alcohol. I will dance until my shirt is wet. I will come outside and then go back again. I never get tired of dancing. But when the time came, I separated myself from those groups I was in. That one became holy. That doesn't mean I stop everything I was doing at once. Eh? The moment you separate yourself and set yourself apart, God, I'm ready to become holy. Need say any man is highly huh? Yeah. Amen. So when you set yourself apart, you separate yourself from what the way you are doing, you become God's item for you to be used. You become holy. That's why he says, you are made the righteousness of Christ. 
then why did Jesus Christ come to die? What was the need of his blood? Who was seeing you? For you to be pure again. Do you mean to tell me that what Jesus Christ came to do was, uh, was a failed task? No. He has set us apart from the world so you and I become holy. Mm. Revelation chapter 5 said, mm. We are priests, mm -hmm. we are kings mm -hmm. unto our God. So you say you are not holy. Okay, if you are righteous, show by your hands. <laughs> Raise it up. Let me see your finger going up there. Righteous people. That's what I'm talking about. Through the blood of Jesus, yeah. yeah. That's it. We are righteous. No, nobody should stop. Oh. Fion. <laughs> Who did you raise your hand up? Okay. Raise your hands up. Now. Let me see your hand up. Righteous people. Ah. Ah. God is happy. <laughs> Next time, if I get a chance to come, I will teach you what you call identity crisis. If you can't identify yourself, what can identify you? <laughs> Amen. I won't go there. The last but one point is this. Uh, okay, go. You've done number five, you've done number six. Okay, and number seven is suffering for others. In suffering for others, you will let your life become like Christ. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter 2:21. The Bible says, For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow his steps. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God. Who always judge fairly. Whatever they say against you, say for the sake of Christ, I won't say anything. You begin to suffer for others. They will insult you for doing something right. Don't insult them back, for Christ didn't do so. The last point is this one. Manifesting the fullness of God. The quotation is Ephesians 3.19. Manifesting the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, verse 19. Say, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Amen. Amen. Only these eight steps, or eight things, meditate upon it day and night. Say, Christ, I want my life to be like you. Help me to live for others. Help me to get away from the world that I was in. Set me apart. Wash me. And any time you live in the newness of life, you take Christ's lifestyle. Amen. 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 I'm ending here. Any question? Please teach me, sir. Any question? You can ask me one. Any questions? Me, my James. Any question? Anything that you don't understand or you have heard before, not through this one, but. Uh -huh. Someone? I understand everything. Okay. God well, bless you. <laughs> Let's go now, Peter. You are going to pray. <laughs> Somebody to thank God for the message we have heard. Somebody thank God. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. We adore you for the word you have spoken unto us. Lord, today you have through your son given us your word. We thank you for changing our life today. We thank